Good morning, and welcome back to all of our parishioners and followers. The message this week comes from the great book of Penn. The message is, the best is blessed. I said the best is blessed. And Max Holloway is the best. Can I get an amen? amen? Now, here at the Honorable Anderson Silva, Kevin Randleman, Evan Tanner, Pride Never Dies, Church of Martial Arts, we appreciate champions the way we appreciate donations. And Volkanovsky is the champion. But Volkanovsky is not the best. Because the best uh, is blessed. Uh, can I get an amen? amen? Max Holloway beat up Calvin Cater and did the commentating along the way. Yair Rodriguez came in and threw everything and the kitchen sink. And Max Holloway just did the dishes and put them away nicely. And why? And why? Because the best star uh, is blessed. I said the best star uh, is blessed. Y'all don't hear me though. Can I get an amen? Amen. What's up, people? Welcome back to the BCMA Podcast. That's the Black Clover Martial Arts Podcast. It's your boy, Lucky, from Lucky's Muay Thai. And this is episode 50. Should I do it the other way? I don't know how it's going. Either way. It's episode 50, and I'm super stoked. Thanks for riding along. Um, it's been crazy. Uh, we had a lot of guests at the beginning. I don't even know what made me do this except for boredom. And I've been wanting to do a show or podcast or something for a while. Plus, I love acting, so I got a chance to do some characters as you might know, and um, it's been fun. I've enjoyed it so thoroughly. So thank you to all the listeners, all the watchers. Um, I'm going to put together a little highlight reel. So if you are a podcast listener, please go to the YouTube when this comes out, um, and the highlight reel will be on there as well for the first 50 episodes. And I hope you enjoy that. (sighs) It's been a blast, man. Thank you guys so much. In this episode, uh, we'll talk about what 50 means although we just did a little bit. Uh, I also got tapped to officiate a wedding, and I'll tell you about that. I missed the Crawford versus Porter fight um, because we were fighting that night. It was kind of nuts, but um, it went as expected except for one thing. And, again, we fought, and I had what I called my Teddy Atlas moment. You're a fireman. It wasn't exactly like that. And after watching uh, some of the clips from Porter uh, Crawford, it was sort of a Crawford's corner moment. Um, and we'll get into that. And, uh, yeah, Max Holloway is the best. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, there's a warrior. Anyway, we'll get into all that. But first, if you like the show, keep the like, hit the subscribe button, tell a friend. Um, all right, if you want to stop by the gym, hit us up at www.luckiesnt.com, and we'll set you up with a trial class. You can try it out. If you like it, you can join. Join this fun family of kicking things and punching things. Um, but seriously, uh, it's great for getting in shape. Obviously, it's good for some self-defense. And um, it's good for community. And my gym is a no assholes allowed gym. Um, it's just too small of a facility for somebody to just be an asshole. So um, if you want to come by and have some fun while learning how to do Muay Thai, please hit us up at www.luckiesnt.com. We also have a Black Friday deal going on. I'll post that right there. Take a quick look, screenshot it. All right. Hit us up, and um, we'd love to have you stop by. Okay, it's episode 50, and um, I didn't know if I was going to get through 10. I was like, if I get through 10, maybe I can get 15. I didn't know where this was going. I didn't know where the pandemic was going. Obviously, I had a lot of guests on. I had some doctors on. I had some fighters on. I had you know some coaches on, and I had a great time doing that. And I'm going to have some guests back on, and I've enjoyed just dropping these, just me and you chatting. I've gotten a lot of comments. I've had some people join the gym because of the podcast. It means a lot to me to have a voice and something, you know, I hope it comes off as a balanced opinion, you know, on some things. And I hope that, you know, that you can feel my love and my humanity through this show. If you're a listener, I love the fact that you listen. Um, if you're a watcher, I hope that you enjoy like the, the little skits and things that I do and the chance that I, you know, took doing some of these characters and whatnot and throwing it out there. Um, and the fight commentary, you know, it's stuff that I love, but it's not everything. So I like to talk about a bunch of different things and you guys have ridden with me basically throughout this whole thing. So 
Thank you very much. Um, before we get into the fighting stuff, I got tapped to officiate a wedding. I have two fantastic fighters that are, I say fighters, friends that were first uh, fighters of mine. I had one, Felipe, and another that came along later, Sarah. I introduced them, I guess, on the team. And they both fought for me for a few years. Sarah was undefeated. Felipe started to come into his own and rattle off a win or two. And then they decided to move to California. They had found their love, which I was very happy for. And I'm excited for them now. And they just sent me a package and a message telling me to wait until I'll put the package, a picture of it, um, telling me to wait. Maybe I should go get it. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get it. I'm back. All right. They were telling me to wait till I saw them, uh, till I talked to them on FaceTime to open it. So we finally FaceTimed and I opened it. And this is what it said. Uh, it says, coaches, whether it's Muay Thai rings or wedding rings, we still need you in our corner. Right. And they're signed with their names. It has Muay Thai stuff. It has wedding rings. And I'm like, I don't know. What does that mean? I'm like, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. And they're like, we want you to officiate our wedding. Whew. Okay. So. This is the first time I've ever done this. I'm super excited. I'm super nervous. But also, I'm overjoyed at the fact that um, I was able, I'm getting emotional. As if you've watched this show, you know I will. Um, that I was able to touch some people's lives in a, in a way so profoundly that they would ask me to um, preside over their wedding. So, <sighs> anyway. I'm stoked about that. I'm going to try to chill, but yeah, man, this is what it's done for me. It's allowed me to, um, it's allowed me to touch and meet some people and I'm so grateful. So thank you for listening and thank you. If I've had a chance to teach you or coach you or be around you and, and, you know, hopefully I was, you know, a, a, a solid person and I actually, you know, you try to do that more every day, but you know, and apparently I've touched some people and I'm super stoked about it. And that's all I've ever asked for. And I'm still doing it. And it's going to all, you know, it's going to all run its course and pay off the way it's supposed to. So I'm loving it. Um, as I said, I'm Miss Crawford Porter because we were fighting. We'll talk about that. Um, but there was a moment I get, I don't remember what round it was. I don't know if it was the eighth, ninth, whatever round it was. But Crawford's corner told him. That Porter was up. And he said, how? And they were like, yo, he's up. And he was like, oh, oh, he's up? All right, bet. And that's when he went out and put on the, you know, performance that took Sean Porter out of the game, out of the fight. Um, got his, the fight called by his father, the whole thing everybody knows. Um, but, yeah. So when we fought, I had a moment like that. I didn't know where it was going, right? Keanu went out there and he fought, you know, a slightly taller, slightly bigger opponent who was game as F. The dude was there to fight and he was fighting. I think Keanu got the better of him the first two rounds, but it was very close and there were moments of exchanges that you couldn't tell what the judges might see. Now, when you, we went back and watched some of the clips, we went back and watched some of the, uh, looked at some of the pictures it was clear that Keanu had landed quite a bit of punches. Um, there were a couple of headbutts. There was a cut over the opponent's eye. Listen, man, the dude was still in there banging and there was blood everywhere. So, um, before the third round though, I was unsure and I did not know we were in this guy's house. It was his, you know, home gym or whatever. So, um, I had my Teddy Atlas moment where you know, I wasn't in there, wasn't in that corner that moment to give technical advice. I was in there to connect with the fighter and to express to them the energy that they're going to need to win the fight and what they're going to need to do to dig down deep and that they're going to have to do this or they're going to probably lose. Now, whether that's true or not, it's irrelevant. Crawford's team told him, the same thing and whether they knew if he was winning or not, or I don't think they knew, I don't know, but those are moments and the Teddy Atlas moment, obviously uh, with Tim Bradley, I, it was Tim Bradley. I think um, those are moments where 
all the technique stuff that you've taught that you've worked on that that stuff is is it's not a it's irrelevant because what needs to happen is the fighter has to express now their the the deepest points of their heart and lay it all out and that's what he did he went out and he won decisively the third round and it ended up being a split decision it took a long time to tally i was like oh man they're gonna call it a draw i didn't know what they were thinking um but it ended up being a split decision victory in our favor and i love that part of uh coaching as well it's being able to connect with the fighter it's not just the technical work man and it's it's the it's the mental work and it's the mental connections and all those things if you're not connected with your coach in that way and you're just to show up at the gym i train here i train there i show up at the gym and then i go i'm not connected with that person they're just you know corner me or whatever i mean that's not really what i do i know some people are able to do that but i need to have some sort of connection for moments exactly like that if we're not connected and i come to you in the corner and i'm cursing and i'm telling you like this is what's happening and you got to pick it up and whatever the case may be you may not respond because you may not feel you know we that we have anything you know connect the connection matters so anyway that happened it was great we won it was awesome um i'm going to put a picture up somewhere so you can see keanu he did fantastic um the photographer took great photos by the way again i don't remember this guy's name but um yeah awesome Okay, uh, Max Holloway versus Yair Rodriguez. Yeah, I opened with some weirdness, but, you know, the reality is Max Holloway, um, first of all, that fight was a banger. That was the real deal. Max Holloway's chin is amazing, and his ability to, his fucking ability to fight, his IQ, stand-up, ground game, he's a well-rounded guy, he's a performer for the fans, He's outside of the, the octagon, at least as far as everybody knows. He is the nicest uh, family man, you know, that people could want to be around. Look, um, he's done things already, UFC history, bigger than a lot of people in the UFC history. Uh, first fighter in UFC history to, to land 3,000 strikes. And two, so it was a 2,800 something of those were significant. The next closest is Frankie Edgar, 1,800 strikes. And if you watch Frankie Edgar's earlier career, you knew he threw a combination all the time. He still does, but obviously we know where Frankie Edgar's career is gone right now. He's only at 1,800. And Max Holloway is young. He's not an old guy. He's got a long way to go. Yo, this number that he's putting up right now, he's at 3,000 strikes. This number... I don't know, man. I don't know when it'll be surpassed. I can't tell you. And as far as Volkanovski goes, he is in a really unique situation because I wouldn't be mad at him if he was like, I'm going to go fight another top contender. I don't know who it would be, but I would, I want to go fight somebody else. He's fought this dude twice. He's won it twice on the, listen, we all know Razor Thin and that people think Max won. People think Volkanovski won. Volkanovski actually won, um, at least on the judges' scorecards. So, should they fight again? I, I believe they will. Does it have to be now? I mean, everybody would like it to be now. Who else would Volkanovski fight? we already seen what they these two people do to everyone else. Maybe it's just time for them to get down again. Um, and if that's the case, everybody's buying the fucking ticket. If Max Holloway wins this fight, he is maybe the, maybe the GOAT. And look, Volkanovsky has nothing to be upset about any of this. He knows, man. He knows what's in front of him. He knows how he had to fight. I, I know that he knows that this is, this is like, um, similar in some ways to Colby Usman in that they both know what's in front of them and they both know it's going to be a long day one way or the other. And so look, I, I just wanted to shout out Max Holloway for being one of the best fighters of all time for many, many reasons. And obviously, Ayer Rodriguez is a phenomenon. So to be Max Holloway and to take that victory over such a freaking young, fantastic fighter, you know, the best is blessed. If you like the show, keep the like, hit the subscribe button. I cannot believe we made it to episode 50. I love you guys so much. Thanks for sticking around and commenting and 
following and subscribing and keeping the like. Um, and thank you for coming to the gym and joining just based off of hearing me chat. Yo, I super appreciate you. Like I said, I hope you enjoy the holiday season. If you want to stop by the gym, hit us up. www.luckysandtea.com. We got Black Friday special going. We got nothing but love in our hearts going, going forward. Um, we're not the underdog. We have to stop, you know, those of us that believe that and we're believing that with love in your heart. You're not the underdog. Don't let anybody make you believe that you are and don't believe it yourself. You're doing the things you're doing because you're supposed to be. I don't know why I was leaning like that. You're doing the things you're doing because you're supposed to be doing them. Um, count on yourself. Work hard. Everything's a struggle if you want to make, make uh, some progress and success happen. So I love you guys going into episode 51 and beyond. Um, we'll talk about Christmas stuff, holiday stuff, all of that in the future. And uh, some surprises. And we're going to Arizona for for Christmas. So, you know, I don't know if I'll vlog out there, if there's even going to be a gym or something I can go to and check out. But either way, I love you guys. I hope you have a great day. Peace from the BCMA podcast. It's your boy, Lucky. I'm out.